Okay, so for differential equations that require the chain rule, how you can recognize them is, is that you're going to have uh, a second order differential equation. Now what we can solve, we can solve very easily first order differential equations with two variables. An example of something like that would be ds dt is equal to s. This would be a first order because there's no second derivative in it and there's only two variables, ds and dt, so we could easily solve that. That's the type of one we're looking for. Now what we have here is a second order differential equation, so we have to do something about this. Now, if we let dy dx equal to v, well, then we get d2y dx squared, the second derivative of this will be equal to dv dx. Now, we can also say, and we'll use a different colour for this, this is where the chain rule comes in, that dv dx, which is that one there, is, e is equal to, I'll just get rid of that there, uh, dv dy times dy dx. If you can look at it, one way to remember it is that these two dy's could kind of cancel and you're left with dv dx. So th that is equal to this. Next step is that we remember that dy dx, we let it equal to v. So we have dy dx, I can now write as, I can write this, d2y dx squared now is equal to dv dy times use a different colour for it, just so it's clear, V. And that just came from that little substitution. Now, we're ready to go with the question. Because if we use this bit here, in the original equation up here, and this here, we'll end up with a first order differential equation with two variables. So I'll just rewrite, I'll rewrite the whole thing. So we're told that d2y dx squared is equal to y. So instead of that, I'm going to fill in. I'm going to fill in that dv dy v is equal to y. Now, this is where we can start working now because it's a first order differential equation with only two variables we can solve this. First step is we want all the v's to one side, all the y's to one side. So just rearrange, multiplying both sides by dy, we get v dv is equal to y dy. Integrate both sides now. And we get the integral of v is v squared over 2. And this one here would be y squared over 2. And then we can just include one limit of integrate, uh, one uh, constant here, plus c. And that'll, that'll account because we don't have any limits on this. So, we have to get rid of this C next. And the way you get rid of the C is you go back to what was stated. Now we are told that dy dx is equal to 1, and y is equal to 1 when x is equal to 0. Well, what do we have here? So, we're told that y is equal to 1 when x is equal to 0. Can I use that? Or I can go dy dx, which we let to be equal to v, is equal to 1. So that's the same as v is equal to 1, y is equal to 1, and x is equal to 0. So v is equal to 1, y is equal to 1, and x is equal to 0. We can use these two here, v and y, sub them in there, and we get a value for c. And I'll just sub them in there, I get 1 half is equal to 1 half plus c. So c is equal to 0, and we have our new equation, which is v squared over 2 is equal to y squared over 2. Next, multiply both sides by 2, and we get v squared is equal to y squared. With the square root of both sides, and I get v is equal to plus or minus y. Now, again, we have to go back to our limits of integration. v is equal to 1 when y is equal to 1, and x is equal to 0. Those are our limits of integration. So let's see, do any of these not work? Well, if I go with the plus one, v 
is equal to plus y. Well, when y is v is equal to 1, y is equal to 1. So this is going to work. The second one here is v is equal to minus y. Well, if I put in 1 for v and 1 for y, so that one does not work. So our answer is v is equal to y. Now, that's not finished, of course, because we still have to go back and uh, substitute back in for v. So we know that v is equal to dy dx. So dy dx is equal to y. Multiply both sides by dx, divide both sides by y. Again, this is a first order differential equation where first order differential equation where there are only two variables, so this is this is solvable. Multiply both sides by dx, divide both sides by y, get dy over y is equal to dx. Again, we can integrate both sides now, and I get a value here of uh, the integral of 1 over y is the same as the natural log of y is equal to x dx plus c, sorry, is equal to x and then just plus c, integral of 1 is just x. And now we know our, we can use our limits again to get rid of this. So when y is equal to 1, x is equal to 0. So I can sub that in there. So the natural log of 1 is equal to 0 plus c. The natural log of 1 is 0, so c is equal to 0. So our solution to this problem here is ln y is equal to x, or just to tidy it up a little bit, get x, you can take raising both to the power of e, so we get y is equal to e to the power of x, and that's our answer.